Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about a session that's called Managing Our Patients Across Specialties, Interstitial Lung Disease. And the speaker, Corey Fratelli, is a nurse practitioner in pulmonology, and so she's talking to nurses and nurse practitioners about collaborating and coordinating with different specialties to make sure that they have the best outcomes for the patients. And just so you know, you may see me looking at my notes or also at my other computer screen to get the information. I want to make sure that everything is as accurate as possible. So don't mind me. The, the autoimmune diseases that are most likely to develop interstitial lung disease include rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's, um, lupus, mixed connective tissue disease, systemic sclerosis, and sarcoidosis. And that's only one umbrella or one branch of ILD. There's a lot of ILD that can come from other diseases or other situations, but this is a specific one that we're talking about. There is a picture here that I can, let me see, let's show you. This picture here shows specifically some of the things to look out for when possibly a screening for ILD. So dry cough, unexplained chronic exertional dyspnea, which basically means extreme fatigue or tiredness after getting up to walk, exertional. So that's, and chronic means it's always happening. Inspiratory crackle slash Velcro. So when you are inhaling, if it sounds like what it, Velcro sounds like when it rips. Ugh, I wish I could find something right now that has Velcro, but I don't see anything in my direct eye that has Velcro, but that's the sound that your lungs will sound like when you inhale. There's also digital clubbing. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like you're going to go dance on the internet, but they mean uh, digits as in your fingers and clubbing as it it becoming big at the end. So that's a little picture of the specifics to look out for. They also talk about specifically shortness of breath, fluctuating O2 sats or O2 saturation, and looking out for fevers and chills. So that's one of the big things that they talked about. And let's see, specifically she talked about two patients, one that had systemic sclerosis and was being monitored, um, continuously monitored to see, to make sure that ILD is not developing. So she, I guess they, there was some kind of situation where there was a fear that she was developing it. So they had her reach out to the pulmonologist and start to get followed up with every three to six months. And the, she talked about the different tests that they do in order to check what is going on and to just double, just make sure that they are able to uh, look at everything. So I'm going to again, share my screen so I can show you this little chart here. So continuous monitoring for ILD, which basically means she does not have ILD yet, but they want to make sure that they're looking. Subjective clues versus objective clues. She talks a lot about how you have to talk to the patient and get the context of what their symptoms are in order to really understand where it may be coming from. There could be a lot of reasons why someone is, is fatigued or is out of breath and things like that. So they want to make sure that you get the context. And the objective clues have to do with testing, the gas exchange. There's a six foot walk test to see basically how out of breath someone might become or how tired they get from exertion. There's also the FVC, which stands for flow volume curve and the spirometer. And those have to do with those tests that you, they like plug your nose and you have to push out air as far as, or as uh, hard as you can. The speaker even had us try it while we were there. And she talks about how patients hate that test because it gets them very tired, but that's something that is super important to measure. And last thing that they do is check imaging, which is um, usually a high resolution CT scan. Um, so that's what they're looking for when they're monitoring for ILD. And let's see. And 
and she gives the specifics on when to suspect ILD. So this can be very helpful for all of you who may have the diseases that I listed in the beginning. So if a patient has exertional shortness of breath and or chronic cough, make sure to listen carefully for crackles at the bases of the lungs. So they're going to be looking over here, more towards your abdomen. Do an informal hallway walk. If uh, the O2 saturation is greater than 3%, that is abnormal. So if you go from 99 to 95, just walking down the hallway, that's another sign. And they also say to make sure to order the other tests, the spir spir spirometry, and order the, checks, the chest x-ray or the high resolution CT. So those are the things to look for. She goes in a little bit more into detail about the numbers and things like that for the gas exchange and all of the other tests, but that was a little bit over my head. I just wanted to make sure that we get down the basics of what ILD is and what is important for patients to know about ILD. And yeah, that was the information that I got from, out of this talk. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.